I grew up at a fishing and hunting camp in the Tomogamy Forest Reserve, where winters hit 40 below and summers brought plagues of mosquitoes and black flies. The camp was on the shores of Tilden Lake, surrounded by the bush for hundreds of miles. This was teeming with wildlife and the fishing was marvellous. During the spring, summer and fall, the camp was full of tourists, fishermen and hunters. My young life was spent in the lake, on the lake and in the bush. Muriel, who owned the camp, was a Canadian woodswoman, hunting guide, artist and one of the true great characters of the North. She smelt of apple blossom and could skin a bear in nothing flat, was a true shot and donned down to six pack with rum and coat chasers. When hunting, she wore the vivid huntsman's plaid jacket and carried a backpack with a two pound jar of Pond's cold cream and several vivid <laughs> lipsticks. She drove a fabulous red Cadillac and painted delicate silk scarves with animated bush creatures. We had a log cabin on the shore of the lake, basic in construction. And the deliciously sweet, clean smell of its cedar and pine stays with me forever. There was no electricity, just stove, a big wood, wood burner whose gargantuan appetite ate forest day and night. And the paraffin lamps which cast their soft glow over the lovely shellacked floors. Rifles, fishing rods, snow skis, water skis, skates and outboard motors festooned the walls and low rafters from which baby bats dropped. It was an outdoor life which I revelled in. Nature came in when the door was open. One day mum hollered, onto the bed quick, as she doused a rattlesnake with coal oil as he scuttled away. When they shed their skins, we collected the rattles from their tails. Ooh. Once a skunk family took up residence under the veranda, and it was my lot to be bathed in tomato juice to rid me of the terrible stench of a skirt Cheek and chipmunks would come and stuff their cheeks with fat pink marshmallows. Deer would prick their way daintily along the trails and Zeke the hound dog would pay the price for messing around with porcupines. In his youth, a truck had gone over Zeke and a lone straggled tooth projected from a wickedly undershot jaw. When the, way, when the wolves howled, he mournfully yelled to be let in. I don't blame him. They sent sugars up your spine, especially in winter when they would drive the deer onto the frozen lake where they didn't stand a chance. I taught myself to swim when I was four by jumping off the dock and sploshing my way somehow to the shore. That done, you couldn't keep me out of the water. And I had a real birch bark canoe and explored fine sandy beaches, collecting the silver driftwood sculpted into wonderful shapes. This was carved into lamps, ashtrays and other knickknacks and sold to the tourists. Paddling in the utter tranquility of a tilted morning, a loan would call and then dive into the depths to emerge with a pike or trout. And once an otter playfully clung to the paddle, playing, catch me if you can. These little charmers became the first study for conservation by the famous grey owl. He was from Hastings, left the two old aunts who brought him up for a more who brought him up for a more celebrated life, masquerading as a Red Indian. <laughs> Grey Owl was before my time. But thanks to him, we are all more aware of the time bomb ticking for the forest folk. Sometimes, standing in beds of water lilies, a moose could be seen munching them, oblivious to looking rather foolish with pink and white blossoms dangling from his antlers. <laughs> And then there was old Baptiste, a Chippewa Red Indian, who taught me to track. With his fringed buckskin jacket and trousers, beaded moccasins and long beaded braids, he was my buddy. 
Together we hiked up the pipeline into the deep bush, me trying to emulate his graceful stealth. I had a lot to say, but what he knew was useful and could have saved my life. Because one day I took it in my head to visit the camp across the lake. I set off in my swimmers with a jam jar for collecting frogs and took a logging trail into the bush. The wrong one. Hours went by, night fell, and the Ontario Posse were called out. At 4am, at four years old, I was found asleep on a rock, having crossed a big dam and survived the bears and wolves. <laughs> old Baptiste had traced my bare footprints and I was quite okay. Poor mum. My ability to lose myself in other parts of the globe would have come as no surprise. Tarzan, who had Beagle in camp, was another character. Sporting a plaid tam o and a spittle of chewy, chewing tobacco from the plug in his cheek, he would disappear for days tending his traps and then sell the furs, fox, mean curmin, beaver, musquash, rabbit. Tarzan was my hero because he built a marvellous contraption which he christened the theme. Basically, a raft with a motor used for transporting the garbage up the lake to the dump. I was allowed to be tiller girl, and as we putted along, we knew there was a good chance of seeing the bears at the dump. Bears were all over the place, and the dump brought them from miles to Runka with its enticing smells. They used to come into camp and knock the garbage cans over and were dangerous and best avoided. Close up. One of the magical places was the beaver dam. These many engineers cleared vast swathes of bush, stripping the felled cottonwoods for choice saplings. These were transported to their magnificent lodge where the kits were reared. Whap, 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 went their tails across the pond. Watching them industriously fixing a break in the dam was a marvel we never tired of. Tarzan played the fiddle at barn dance it held in the little schoolhouse. I loved him doing the calling. Take your partners, swing him to the left, swing him to the right and do the doozy do. With everyone wildly stomping three sheets to the wind, a good time is had by all. And one night, coming in from a blizzard, Tarzan's stew smelt mighty fine. So good I had seconds, but wasn't too sure of its provenance when I found a bristly tail in the pot. <laughs> the lake looked its best when the maple trees dressed in their fiery reds and yellows reflected their glory. Winter may be coming, but look at me now, they seemed to say. Vast skeins of duck and honking snow geese would wing their way to James Bay. The bush would sound with rifle shots and hunters left with their trophies. <coughs> then one day you'd go out and smell the snow coming. You could tell it to the day. The lake froze over and the temperature plummeted to 40 below and we got snowed in. This meant climbing on rooftops and shoveling great swathes of snow off and breaking the huge icicles. It was a winter wonderland and time for skating on the lake, snowshoeing through the bush, following little animal tracks and trails, and doing a spot of ice fishing. Then the breath would freeze on your lashes and eyebrows and ice them up, and your wolverine hood was a frosted aura. This was my little kingdom. I was so lucky to have had the freedom of the forest and lakes to grow and love nature. I will always respond to the call of the wild. <coughs>